Welcome to another video. I am the Starman, and in this video, I want to talk about the Perseid Meteor Shower. Now, the Perseid Meteor Shower is an annual meteor shower, so we're talking shooting stars. We have quite a few meteor showers throughout the year. Other notable ones are the Geminids in December. We also have the Lyrids back in April. Yeah, so we have quite a few of these meteor showers throughout the year now what uh, meteors are are little specks of dust tiny little specks of dust sometimes a little bit bigger than that maybe little stones and that that come into the atmosphere of the earth as it goes around the sun you can actually get them on any night if you go out at night and you look up at the stars if you do quite a bit of stargazing you've most likely seen a shooting star or a meteor. I tend to call them meteors because uh, a lot of people call them shooting stars because I think in the olden days, before they realised that stars, there's no way that a star could fly across the sky. But they do look like stars that zip across the sky. They can be very, very bright, but they can also be very, very quick. You, if you blink, you can miss them. So yeah, so the Perseid meteor shower peaks on around, I think it's the 11th, from the 11th to the 13th. So what we're looking at is, if you get a chance to go out from the 11th of August, on the evening of the 11th, I believe it's a Sunday, and then into the 12th, into the morning, I think we've got a better chance of seeing the meteors in the morning of the 12th, or even on the morning of the 13th, which is, I believe is a Tuesday. That'd be into the Tuesday then. So it's better after midnight. So, so there's a chance of seeing, in fact, if you could see the whole sky, if you could see the whole sky and it was perfectly clear and the, the radiant, where the, the, the meteors come from, that's important because the meteors come from a particular radiant in the sky and that's the constellation of Perseus. That's why they're called the Perseids. That it's actually, um, as the Earth goes around the sun, we go into these dust clouds and this dust cloud is caused by a comet called Swift Tuttle, which left a big dust trail and every time, every August, we go into that dust cloud and you get these, what we call, Perseid meteors and I reckon that um, I'm just looking here just checking I'm just on the uh, the Royal Astronomy website which I'll put a link to in the description you can check it out for yourself but it's saying here that it peaks it actually says here that it peaks on the morning of the 13th but but there are some other accounts that say it peaks on the morning of the 12th now like I say it's better after midnight if you want a chance to see them now, like I was just about to say before, that you could actually see around about 100 meteors. If you could see everything and the radiant was overhead, we're never going to see that many meteors in an hour, no chance. I would probably guess that if you picked a part of the sky to look at, preferably probably somewhere not straight towards the radiant, which is Perseus, but I think it's going to be sort of towards the northeast, I would probably pick uh, maybe look towards the east or maybe look towards the south or something you can see the meteors anywhere in the sky if you're looking on the night anyway as long as the radiant is up but i think that the morning will be better because the radiant where they come from Perseus, will be higher up in the sky and realistically i would probably say if you were very very much concentrating and you're in a dark sky as well being somewhere quite dark is important these meteors can be quite fast. Like I said, they can, you can blink and you'll miss them altogether. But yeah, if you can pick apart a dark, nice dark sky, nice clear weather as well, well, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see about that, won't we? I'm in the UK. And by the way, this is for the Northern Hemisphere as well. So if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're out of luck. So you can't see this meteor shower in the, in the Southern Hemisphere. So I reckon we've got about a chance of seeing maybe 20 an hour. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, my, my astronomy club, we went up to a site up, uh, I'm in Blackpool, we went up to a, a site in Pelling on the south bank of, the, of Morgan Bay. Quite nice dark sky, not, 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 not really, really dark, but we saw loads and loads of Perseid meteors and uh, it's a really, really good meteor shower. I think it's, uh, it's probably the best meteor shower of the year mainly because it happens in summer and usually we have good weather in the summer. Now the other major meteor shower, which I think is really, really good is the Geminids, but that happens in December. Now it's 
you know what it's like in December, don't you? It's absolutely freezing. So uh, um, that's a little bit of a downer on the Geminids. I do think the Geminids are actually a little bit better, but it happens in the middle of winter. But this is a chance to get out and get some stargazing in. And you never know, you might just see an amazing meteor flying across the sky. I'll just put some pictures on the screen for you now of Perseid meteors that I have captured down the years. In fact, not all of these are Perseids. Some of these might be from the other meteor showers. I think there's a Lyrid in there and, and, and some Geminids in there. But, but this is how they look when you take a long exposure photograph. If you want to know how to take pictures of them, I'll put a link to a video that I made where I showed you how to set a camera up to take long exposure photographs of meteors. But anyway, what I want to do now is we're going to go onto the computer now and I'll set Stellarium up and I'll show you what the night sky is going to look like from my latitude. I'm at 53 degrees north in the northern, so like a mid-latitude north of the equator. And uh, we'll have a look at the night sky and we'll have a look and see where where it where where they come from, first of all, the, the, the constellation of Perseus. That's where they, they don't actually come from the constellation because the, the stars are, are light years away, but they actually appear to come from that part of the sky. So we'll have a look at Stellarium now, and I'll try and describe to you the best way to see these meteors, the Perseid meteor shower. Okay, so here we go. This is Stellarium, and this is the web version of Stellarium. You can get an app for this, by the way, for your for your phone you can get a free app you can also pay for it as well it's a very very comprehensive star map for looking at the night sky you can look at constellations you can look at planets you can look at all sorts of things on solarium and it's absolutely brilliant you it's it's amazing it's my favorite uh, app for looking at the night sky now um, my latitude is 53 degrees north so i've got that set up on here so we're looking at the sky now at 10 o'clock on the 11th. If we go down here, we've got the date. So that's the 11th of August at 10 o'clock. So this is how the sky looks. And there's quite a bit of twilight, actually. We still have a little bit of twilight at this latitude at this time of year. A little bit of twilight. Now, luckily for us, with the moon is, it's, it's looked like it's coming up to like a half moon there or a first quarter moon. That's going to be out of the way. Now, that's good because we don't really want the moon in the way because the moon can interfere with the meteors and it can affect the amount of meteors that we see so we don't want the moon into the way and luckily enough the moon is due to set at around about well probably half past 10 or so if i fast forward this now to 11 o'clock the moon is now out of the way and look at that always like magic isn't it that's the milky way we're looking at there now the galactic plane of the milky way towards the south now, I would need to be somewhere pretty dark to be able to see it like that, I have to admit. But anyway, what we're looking for in this video is we're looking for the constellation of Perseus so we can find out where to look for these meteors. We're currently looking towards the south. So I'll turn it round and we'll look more towards the north. And now we're looking towards the north. Now, what we want to really do is look towards the northeast. We're trying to identify the constellation where they come from, you see, not or, or where they emanate from, where the, where the meteors actually emanate from, and that is Perseus. So I'll bring up Perseus now, and as you can see, Perseus is quite low in the sky at 11 o'clock on the 11th. And this is why I say it's better to go out later from midnight onwards, maybe, because that way the, the, the constellation is a bit higher up. If I move around a little bit, we can actually see Ursa Major there. Now, Ursa Major is called the Great Bear, and it also contains that very, very um, recognisable asterism, which is the, the plough or the Big Dipper. You can see that part of, and that is towards, sort of towards the north, northwest there. So we're just looking towards the northeast here and as we can see Pierce's if I fast forward the time a bit to say midnight you'll see it gets a little bit higher up now if we look above Pierce's we can see a very recognizable shape of stars shaped like a W that's Cassiopeia now that could be a good tip actually because if you can see Cassiopeia all you have to do then is just draw your eyes downwards a little bit and we get to see the constellation of Perseus, which which does actually stick out quite a bit. It, there are some very, very bright stars in Perseus, so it is quite a nice, bright constellation. So if you see a shooting star go flying across the sky, any and it could be anywhere in the sky, 
and you can trace it back to this area of sky, then you know that you saw a Perseid meteor. But you could just get any old meteor flying across the sky, and it might not even come from that direction. It could just go flying across from left to right, and that just could be just a random meteor which you can get on any night, you can see on any night at all. But what we're looking for is Perseid meteor. So I think if you want to look for them, what you want to do is you maybe don't want to look straight towards the constellation because you tend to see them coming towards you and they tend to have short trails. So I think if maybe if you look towards the east, you know, we've got Saturn out there, look, Saturn. You could you could look towards the great square of Pegasus up here. Uh, you could even look towards the south. You know, you could look towards the Milky Way there. Look at that. I'll just turn the constellations off. Now, I got a picture. It's going back a long time. I actually got a picture of a Perseid meteor going straight down the galactic plane of the Milky Way. This goes to show that you can see them anywhere in the sky. But if you actually see them further away from the radiant, they tend to make much longer trails. You might get a lucky and see a fireball because that's what we're really looking for. Most of the meteors you will see are, are kind of blinking, you'll miss it. You know, oh, someone will say, oh, did you see that meteor there? And you turn around, it's gone because it, they last no time at all. But what we, what we really like are the fireballs. And you do get quite a lot of fireballs from the Perseid meteor shower. But if I just fast forward the time on a bit now, if I fast forward it to say one o'clock, two o'clock, we'll see the stars are rising higher and higher. We can now see that Perseus is right up there now. Cassiope getting higher. So this is how you know that where the, the, the meteors are coming from. It's roughly this part of the sky towards, towards the northeast. And the, the earlier in the morning, the better. So maybe two o'clock in the morning is probably about the peak time. Um, I can run it on a bit further. Depends how long you want to be out for. You know, they're just going to get higher and higher. So like I say, you don't need to look. You can just look anywhere. I would probably advise not to look straight towards the radiant, but anywhere, anywhere in the sky, you can catch these Perseid meteors. So there you go. That's how you can look for them. So there you go. Make a note, the Perseid meteor shower peaks from the 11th to the 13th. And I think that it's hard to really estimate when the actual peak is going to be they're actually um active now right now before well before the well before the peak and after the peak as well but it's only on the actual peak that you get to see you get that really really good chance of seeing loads of meteors but the shower itself is actually active for quite a lot of the month of august so there you go that's my little video on the Perseid meteor shower. I'll put a link at the end of the video just to give you some tips on how to capture them on camera. They're a bit pesky, these meteors, you know. You can point your camera towards one part of the sky, pick a part of the sky and keep taking long exposure photographs. And what you normally find is they always go off to one side, either that side or that side or behind you. And they're really, really difficult to catch, but it's great fun getting out there and having a look. I, I love meteors. I really do love me meteor showers. I love seeing shooting stars. I must have seen hundreds of them, but then again, I do spend a lot of time out there stargazing. Anyway, I hope you liked this video, and don't forget there's a link in the description to more information on the Persian meteor shower, just in case I missed anything. And also there's a link to Stellarium if you want to check it out. Good luck spotting the Persian meteors and I will see you again on the next video and don't forget to keep looking up.